Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Let's go through our shop rounds today, which is where I go through all the things that I have going on in the shop right now at this moment, and you guys learn a thing or two about luthery and guitar making along the way. So I don't actually have a whole lot of things to talk about this week because a lot of the things I've been doing this week are just kind of maintenance and back end things that aren't at all interesting, you know, things that are more related to the back end of running a business rather than related to guitar making itself. But there are a couple cool things I can talk about here. So let's go through what those things are. Um, first of all, I didn't really get to do too much work on guitar number 85 here. That's the zero coat and redwood topped guitar that you see right here. This is a triple O model. Um, I'm actually at a standstill here with the um, mother of pearl purfling that I have going around the edge because I'm waiting on more pearl material to be able to complete this. So that's where I'm at right now. Installing this purfling is super, super tedious, but it's actually the kind of work that you can really lose yourself in. So it's very enjoyable. You put on some good music and you just keep making these tiny little joints between all your individual pieces of pearl. Very fun, very enjoyable. But um, I've already talked about the pearl quite a bit in past episodes. And I'll be talking about it when I make the full build uh, video for this. Um, moving on from that, other things I've been doing this week, or I'm about to be doing here, is for whatever reason I've decided to actually go back to a couple uh, guitars that I have lying around here, and I'm going to install some of these self-adhesive clear mylar uh, pick guards. So I normally, my opinion on pick guards is if you're building a finger style guitar, which almost all my guitars, that's the purpose that I build them for, you don't really need a pick guard. But even if you're playing finger style, you do a little bit of damage to the top, even just from anchoring your pinky or, or doing something like that. So I'm starting to warm up to the idea of having thin, clear plastic pick guards. I don't really think it has a meaningful impact on the tone, although. It's not like it's something I've A-B tested to really figure that out. Um, I just get the sense, my, my intuition is that it's negligible. The one thing you have to know with sticking these on, I have put on pick guards in the past, but it's been a while, is that this is the kind of thing where you're at the end of the build and it's really easy to think that this is just a little cherry on top that's not going to be too consequential or too difficult to install. It is actually very easy to get bubbles or just the ends lifting on this material or to get little bits of uh, grime or lint under the edges. And if that happens, you've really made a big mess of the top of your guitar because you're going to have to remove that. You're going to damage the finish. It can be a serious problem involving refinishing. So whatever material you use for your pick guards, Follow their instructions, if they have instructions, and really take it all very seriously. Get a nice squeegee so you can rub out the bubbles, uh, the air bubbles that'll form between the pick guard and the finish, or between the pick guard and the wood, depending on if you're installing it over top of the finish or over top of the wood. You can do either one. Uh, another thing that I'm doing, another... Uh, change of heart, I guess you can call it, is end pins. I don't really have end pins on uh, any of my guitars. I, I might have an end pin on, I think like the first three or four guitars might have end pins on them, but I stopped doing end pins after a while. Not really any interesting reason, just I stopped doing them. I'm going to start doing them again. So these are, these are very simple to install. Even on an already finished guitar, you're basically just drilling a hole taking a tapered reamer and reaming it to fit the taper as best as you can, fit the taper of the pin itself, wedging that pin in there with some tight bond original, 
and boom, you're good to go. So these are super easy to install, even after the fact, as an afterthought. These are uh, from LMI, by the way. They have these cool, it's called Parisian Eye, that design, which is a mother of pearl dot with some sort of gold ring around. I would assume it's like a brass tube or something that they install there. But it just is a nice, sharp little extra element. My bridge pins on the guitars that I'm putting this on also have that Parisian eye on each bridge pin. So it's going to carry that theme from the bridge pins down onto the end wedge area of the guitar. Okay, and I'm moving pretty fast through these because I actually don't have a whole lot of time to do my shop rounds today, but I definitely wanted to do it for you guys. Uh, so the next thing we're going to talk about is, or the next thing that I've done around here, is uh, see this big trash bag here. This is filled with uh, cotton rags, lint-free cotton. There's fleece rags as well. They're both white, so they look the same. I've cut them up into little 12 inch by 12 inch squares, and I'm now taking these home to run them through my dryer, which I've already done, but I'm running them through a second time because I'm still getting a little bit of, it's called sizing, I believe. But when you have new fabric from the fabric store, like Joanne Fabrics or something like that, it has this starchy uh, substance on it called sizing, which you want to run it through the wash to remove that before you use them as finishing rags. So that's what I'm using all these for, is for applying true oil finishes. But you would do the same thing if you were doing shellac uh, French polish finishes. You would want your new cloth, if you are using new cloth and not cutting up old t-shirts or something like that, which I recommend new cloth, by the way. Uh, if you are using new cloth, you do have to wash it first. So I'm going to go ahead and give these a second wash and bring them back and uh, keep up with the finishing that is going on in my shop at the moment. Okay, lastly, last thing I want to talk about is the tool of the day, or of the week, or uh, maybe two weeks at this point, because I think I skipped a week. The tool of the week is the Two Cherries Guitar Brace Chisel. These are unbelievable. So for the longest time, I avoided buying these because I just thought I just use a regular straight pairing chisel and that's fine for me. I don't need a specific guitar brace chisel. Well, now that I've tried these, I feel like it's the kind of thing where I really can't go back to the regular chisel anymore because just the feel that you get using these with this cool scoop here, it makes carving those braces such a breeze I think I carve them like 25% quicker without even, you know, without extra effort, without trying. I think I carve my brace ends 25% quicker just because of the convenience of having this little scoop here. They come in three different sizes, large size here, a middle one, and a very small one. And, you know, if you can swing it, I recommend getting all three. I use all three. Uh, when I'm carving, I probably use the middle size the least. So if you only want to get two of them, I would get these two. And if you only want to get one, I would get this one. And actually, the millimeters are right on here. So this is the 20 millimeter, the smallest is the 10, and the middle brace is 16 millimeters. So anyway, check those out. Two cherries, uh, super awesome chisels, great idea with that scoop that just makes these ergonomical. Okay, cool. So that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, real quick shop rounds there. I will have more for you next week. It'll probably be a lot more interesting because I'll be back to getting to work on the, well, I'll have the, I should have the purfling done and I'll be working on the neck and the fretboard and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, plus whatever else is going on in the shop at that time. Oh, and last thing guys, I just want to mention there is only one spot left in all of the spring classes. So that's the March, the two April classes, and the May class. There's just one spot left, and that's in the April 8th through 16th class. 
So if you want to get in in the spring and you don't want to have to wait until either the fall or all the way out to 2023, uh, that would be your last shot there is for that April 8th class. So if you want to book that slot, uh, reach out to me as soon as possible. And uh, just so you know, we're doing new woods. We're doing rosewood back and sides. We're doing spruce for the top. And the class is now nine days instead of eight days. So I've also added that extra day in there. All right, guys, talk to you later. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.